All right, hey there, it's Evan from devisun.com. And in this video, we're going to cover Next.js. And if you're not familiar with Next.js, it's basically a React framework to render your React applications on a server, or in other terms, server-side rendering. Server-side rendering is very useful if you're concerned about things such as SEO, or maybe simply you just want your application to be served through a server. Now, Next.js features a lot of cool features, such as automatic codes splitting, a page routing system, built-in CSS support, fast refresh, and of course an easy deployment system using Vercel. So let's go ahead and install Next.js. And in order to do so, all we have to type is npx create next app, and then the name of our app, I'm going to call my project Next.js tutorial, and I'm going to go ahead and press enter, and it might take a few minutes for this to install. And now we see success here. If you do not see success, uh, make sure you have Node.js installed and as of recording this video you will need 10.13 or later so make sure you have node.js 10.13 or later and the way you can check what version you have is by typing node-v and as you can see I have 12.16.3 so I am good to go as of recording this video now if I go ahead and cd into our next.js tutorial directory I can go ahead and run npm run dev and now it's going to boot it up you see it's a started server on localhost 3000 so let's go ahead and go to that right now. All right, and when I go to localhost 3000, we can see welcome to Next.js. And it gives you a link to the documentation, some interactive learning things, examples, and how to deploy to Vercel. This is basically the default template that it gives you. Now let's go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code or whatever editor that you use. And let's look at some of the features. All right, so let's look at the sidebar here. First, we have our package.json, which is going to contain our scripts and our dependencies, as well as information about our project here. We're gonna see our styles folder, and this is where we're gonna store our CSS. It already creates a globals.css and a home module CSS for us. If we go to our public folder, this is where we're going to store static images and other resources such as the favicon or maybe some svgs or maybe images then we have our pages folder and inside here is where we're going to find our index.js and this file is where we see our home page that we saw right here and as you can see we're importing our styles home module css from our styles folder and we also have our underscore app.js which is basically serving our application here and as you can see at the top we're importing our globals.css says file also from our styles folder. All right, so now let's get into pages. So I'm actually going to remove all of this code inside of our index.js, and I'm just going to leave our function here in our return, and I'm gonna go ahead and remove these two imports as well. So now we should just have our function. So I'm actually gonna to go to our global.css, and we're gonna change our padding to be 12 pixels by 24 pixels. And now if we go to our browser, we're gonna see our home is up here. So let's dive into pages. So inside Next.js, a page is basically basically a React component exported from a .js, .jsx, .ts, or .tsx file inside of your pages directory. And that's a very important thing to remember, that if you are going to create a page, it must be inside of the pages folder. If it is in any other folder, it will not work. So let's go ahead and create an about page. I'm going to say new file about.js. And here we're going to also want to create a function. So we could say export default function about and let's return a div and a h1 tag that says about and now if i go to slash about we're going to see about i'm actually going to make this an h2 tag just to be consistent but as you can see when we created the about.js file inside our pages folder it automatically created a slash about route for us so if i were to rename this file contact.js then if i typed slash contact it would take me to this component here or this page. So by default, Next.js pre-renders every single page. This means that Next.js generates the HTML for every page in advance instead of having it all done with JavaScript on the client side. And Next.js pre-renders this because it can result in better performance and help your SEO. Now Next.js has two forms of pre-rendering. The first is static generation and the second form is server-side rendering. With static generation, 
one, the HTML is generated at build time and is reused on each request. But with server side rendering, the HTML is generated on each request. Now what's cool about Next.js is they'll actually let you choose which form of pre-rendering you want to use for each individual page. So you can have some pages that use static generation and you can have other pages that use server side rendering. Now it's recommended to use static generation over server side rendering because it helps increase performance. But in some cases you may need to have server side rendering and that might be the only option that you can use. So let's take a look at what static generation without data would be like. This about function here and our home function here is static generation without data, meaning we are pre-rendering this page using static generation and we're not fetching any data, meaning we're not taking data like maybe an array of objects or some sort of API endpoint. We're not fetching anything like that. So this is basically just static generation without data. Now let's say you want static generation with data. You want to fetch an API endpoint. If your page content depends on some sort of external data like that, we use a function called get static props. And get static props is actually the next thing that we're going to touch on. So let's go ahead and create a new page here. I'm going to call this users.js. And basically we just have a function here in the h2 tags. I'm going to put users. So if we go to slash users at the top here, we're going to go to our users page. And now we're going to fetch a API endpoint. In this case, I have this API endpoint from JSON placeholder. And it's basically a list of 10 users that we're going to display on our website. And this is where get static props is going to come in real handy. So we're going to go ahead and create our get static props function. And all we have to do is say export async function. And we're going to say get static props. And make sure this is an async function because we're going to be awaiting for our response. And now we're going to call our API endpoint. So I'm going to say const result or res. I'm going to set it equal to await. And then we're going to fetch our endpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this endpoint right here. And I'm going to paste it inside these quotation marks here. Now we're going to say const users equals await and then our response variable dot JSON. Okay. So now all we have to do is actually return this users variable and we're going going to utilize that in our function up here. So I'm going to say return props and inside here we're going to do an object and this object is going to contain our users. Okay now actually we need to do one more thing here before we actually start using this data. We're going to need to go up to our function here and inside the parameters we're going to put curly braces and then we're going to say users which again is the prop that we are returning from our get static props. All right so now just to ensure that we actually have our users prop here I'm going to import use effect from react and here we're going to say use effect and we're just going to actually console log users. So I'm going to go ahead and save that and go to our browser and we're going to go to our console. Ignore these warnings here. I think it's something to do with the extension I have. So let's go ahead and open up this and we see our object here and we see all of our users that we got from this API endpoint that we fetched through our get static props and we returned those props here up into our function. So now let's go ahead and actually map out these users real quick. So in our JSX, we're going to say users.map. And here we're going to say user. Then we're going to have the arrow function. And here we're just going to put a div. And inside this div, we're going to have a h3 tag. And here's where we're going to put our user.name like so. And remember, we're accessing that because we're accessing the name property in our object. So now we can see all our users here. And what else can we access? What else do we have here? Uh, we can access their email. So let's go ahead and put the email in the p tag like so. And now we have all our users that we see in their emails. And this data is all fetched on pre-render, meaning we're fetching it before the page even loads. So this is basically how you would fetch data for your page content before actually rendering the page using get static props. Now we're going to cover dynamic routes or dynamic page paths. So let's say we wanted a specific page for each one of our users. And you could access this page by going up to the URL here and typing slash user slash let's just say Brett, for example. And when we go to this URL, it's going to take us to a page specifically about the user that has the username Brett, which is our first user here in our list. How would we be able 
to do this? Well, let's look at one thing here first. We have two layers to our URL here. The first layer is user, and then the second layer is the username. First, how do we get our user directory? Well, the way we can create a subdirectory is by going into our pages folder and simply creating a folder. And so I want this subfolder to be called user. And that is the case because again, our URL, we want it to be slash user and then slash whatever the username is. So I've created user and now inside user, we're going to create a file. And this file is going to be a dynamic file that can be any one of our usernames that we have in our list. So I could just go ahead and manually create a brett.js file like so, but this is not a good practice because we could be adding users or removing users in the future. And so manually having to go in and change those is just not good practice. Instead, what we can do is we can create a dynamic page path here. And the way we create a dynamic page path is by using two brackets, two square brackets. And inside the square brackets, we're going to put some sort of ID. So I'm going to call this ID username because that is what we want to use from our object. As you see, username here, we're using the username property in our URL. And so just like before, we're going to create a function. The reason we have the square brackets around username here is because this is basically acting as a placeholder for a unique ID that we're going to use to access this page. And so similarly to get static props, we're actually going to use a function, but this time we're going to use export async function get static paths because we're going to have dynamic paths based off of the data that we fetched, kind of similar to what we did with get static props. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this data once again, except now we're going to create another variable. I'm going to call this paths. I'm going to set this equal to users, which again is the response that we got from our fetch turned into a JSON object. And we're going to actually map this. I'm going to say user and then an arrow function. And here we're going to use a template literal, which if you're not familiar with is basically two back ticks. And we can type some string here. We're just going to say user slash. And now we're going to use a dollar sign, two curly braces. And here we're going to want to extract our user dot user name from our user object, which in this case for the first user would be Brett. And basically here we have created URL paths for each one of our users. So that way when we go to the URL for that specific user, all the data will be already pre-rendered. And now just like before, we need to return this. So let's return our paths that we just created here. And we're also going to add a fallback and we're going to set that to false. Now, when we set fallback to false, that basically means other routes will give a 404 error if they do not exist. So if you ever went to a website and you saw a 404 page, basically by setting fallback to false, we are creating 404 pages for all non-existent paths. All right, so one last thing we need to do is we're going to need to export async function get static props, just like we did in our users.js, except this time in the parameters of get static props, we're going to access our params. And this params is basically going to contain our user's username. So if the URL says slash user slash Brett, params is going to contain this Brett ID or username inside this params so we know which ID or what username it is. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and grab this data and we're going to put it inside our get static props. And just like before, we're going to return our props and, and inside our props, we're going to return two things this time. We're going to return our users as well as our params. All right, and now if we go to the top, we're gonna to pull our users and our params, and I'm gonna go ahead and import use state from React. I'm gonna say const user set user and set it equal to use state. And inside our use state, we're gonna say users.find. And this find function is basically going to find us a user in our array that has the same exact username as the username we're passing in our params. So to do this, I'm gonna say you, an arrow, and then we're gonna say you.username. And we're gonna check if it's exactly equal to params, which again, we're passing in here, dot username. And so now it's gonna set our user variable here to be that user that we found in our users array. And so now that we have that, we can actually use this user. So if I say user.name for our h2 tag, and let's go ahead and add a p tag that says user.email. If we go to our browser and let's just go to slash Brett, which is the first user in our users list. So I'm gonna type, slash user slash Brett. We're gonna see now we can see that user and their email. And just to show you
show you another example. Let's go to our array of users here. We're gonna do the Ervin Howell one, and that has a username of Antonette. So if we go ahead and go to slash user slash Antonette, now we can see Ervin Howell and the email attached to it. So this is basically how we can utilize Git static paths to create dynamic paths in our URL and also using Git static props to fetch our data. Now, in most cases, you're probably gonna have an API that has a list of things such as like maybe a list of posts and you're actually gonna have a direct access to each individual post. But with the API that I used, which is slash users, there's no specific user that I can access. So I had to go in and fetch all of the users. But typically you won't have to do that. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at links. Now, links in Next.js can be used to switch between different pages. So for example, I'm gonna import link from next slash link, and we're just gonna go ahead and add the link tag right here. And now inside this link tag, we're going to say, go to users. And now what I can do is I can say href, similar to how we do an anchor tag, and we can just say slash users. And now if I go to our browser and I click on go to users, it's going to take us to our users here. So now let's add another link and we're gonna call this one go to Brett's page. Now, typically when it comes to dynamic pages, you would do slash user and then you would use the placeholder and then you would say as user slash Brett. And this would work if we go to our browser. I'm just gonna add a break tag here just to separate these two. If we go to go to Brett's page, it will take us to Brett's page as you can see up top here. However, in Next.js, 10, they actually added automatic resolving for the href tag. So now you no longer need to use both href and as. Instead, all you can do now is just say slash user slash Brett. And if we go to our browser and I click on go to Brett's page, it's going to take us to Brett's page. But keep in mind, this is only as of Next.js 10, which just came out. So you cannot do dynamic routing like this with links unless you're on Next.js 10 or above. If you are not on Next.js 10, you're going to have to use the as and say user slash Brett or whatever username and then change this back to the placeholder. Now, the reason links are useful as compared to using anchor tags is they allow for client side transitions between different routes on the website. So let's go ahead and go to our users page where we're listing all our users. And now I actually forgot to add a key to our div and we can just say user.id for the key. And this is just to suppress the warning in the console that you need a unique key for every element that you're mapping. So now that we have that done, I actually want to add a link inside each of these users. So I'm going to say import link from next slash link. And inside our div here, we're going to say link and we're going to say go to user page. And so now what we can do is I can say href and we're going to use a template literal inside here. So we're going to do back ticks and we're going to say slash user slash and then here we're going to do the dollar sign curly braces user dot username and now whenever we click on any of these go to user page links it's going to take us to the appropriate users page so let's go ahead and show you that right now so i'm at the home page right now i'm going to go ahead and click on go to users it's going to take us to our users page and now we see a go to user for each one of our users if i click on go to user for let's say leanne graham it's going to take us to the appropriate page if i go to the user page for Ervin Howell, it's going to take us to the page for Ervin Howell. So this is basically how you use the link component and how you can use it dynamically for, say, if you have a list of users. But that pretty much covers how you can switch between your pages. Anyway, that's going to pretty much cover this crash course. And if you want to learn more, I have courses and other content on devison.com. I'm going to have a more in-depth Next.js course coming soon. It might actually already be out by the time you're watching this, but if it's not out, it will be coming out soon. So again, if you want to head over to devison.com, we're going to be having a lot of content there. If it's not there, it will be coming soon. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to cover this crash course. If you have any suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave a comment down below if you need any help, or you could join the Devison Discord server and either myself or someone else will be able to help you out there. Anyway, thank you for watching the crash course, and I hope to see you next time.